Hi guys, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Polly Jo LeBay. This is Chakra Sessions. I'm glad to see you guys here with me this morning, this afternoon, whatever it is for you this time. So today is a day when we're going to discuss um, removing doubt in our energy body. And I think it's something that we all go through. We doubt ourselves, we turn to others and ask for opinions because um, we don't trust our intuition. And we doubt um, even that our circumstances can change or that we are the one creating our life and what's going on. So when we're in places of doubt, um, it becomes really hard to take in the possibility that there could be some change. Um, and so wouldn't it be cool to get the doubt kind of out of your body and out of the way so that you could feel more fully present for yourself and more sure of your decisions and what you're doing. So I think this is a cool topic for us to talk about today. So hi, Lindsay, nice to see you. One of my favorite witchy poos and her uh, beautiful pumpkins. Um, and hi, Nashi. Glad to see you. Um, yeah, today is an interesting day already. Um, I did this huge healing. A couple came for healing this morning. And so, boy, it was like going to town. And um, the spiritual team pulled out all the stops. You know, it was we used the crystal beds. We did regular healing. Um, there were oils and crystals and all sorts of things that were needed to help assist with this healing. Um, and so then this really cool sacred number came up. Um, and enough so that even the woman recognized <laughs> that it was a sacred number um, as the total, you know, and you never know what that's going to be when you add in tax and things like that. And it was, it was such an interesting um, place to be this interesting space of okay this may have felt you know chaotic in the morning but I didn't doubt that everything was supposed to happen exactly the way it did and so it just opened space for of course there's plenty of time to do um, a healing for an extra person and of course we can manage that and of and so there was a lot of this where I would have been looking at my phone. I would have been doubting the, the, the energy. I would have been thinking about it the whole time. But instead, I just let it all go. And I sat in a space where it was like, all right, the divine knows what it's doing. And so I'm just here to be in service today. And how cool is that when you can share that and be in that space? Because um, we can all have tr difficulty with that. So, you know, Neshi being on the show always reminds me if you guys could like and share the broadcast, um, that would be great. You know, whether you share it to your own timeline or to a group, you know, wherever you feel or sense that somebody could use a little help removing some doubt out of their life and get a little bit of healing. Um, so, you know, while people are um, taking time to get on, um, I want to share this really cool story with you. Um, and this is all about releasing doubt and not being in fear and not being attached to the outcome, um, which is kind of where we are today. Hi, Rochelle. Nice to see you as well. So my husband and I were up in Maine for the weekend. Um, and on our way back, we stopped in New Hampshire um, in Portsmouth, and we stopped in this cute little store. Um, and it's part of a chain, but it's not a chain that's real close by. And we walk toward the door, and there's this chair. Um, and my husband said, oh, no, because he saw it before me. He was like, oh, no. And it was what I'd been looking for. It was this beautiful chair that was big enough for me to sit in in meditation. Um, it was this beautiful green color, one of my favorite colors that I have 
a lot of things painted. Um, and he just knew that it was for my, my room because um, my meditation chair, somebody else bought it for me and their energy was attached to it and it needed to go. So I had actually gotten rid of my meditation chair and I was having trouble meditating um, in any other chair. I know that sounds strange, but I needed a chair that was dedicated to that. And we had my Volkswagen Beetle. So this chair was not going in my car. And it's three hours away from my house. And so there was a part of me that was disappointed, but also knew that the divine didn't show it to me for me not to have it, that somehow that was going to shift and that it was going to be fine. And so when we got home, my husband you know, Googled the store and found out that there was one that's about 40 minutes from here. And he said, all right, we're going to go Monday morning. Well, you know, Monday evening, we're going to go and we're last night and we're just going to go see who knows, maybe they'll have the same chair. And it's a type of store where it's, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's home goods. It's like they have what they have. They don't usually have the same thing in different stores. Um, and so we got in the store and not only did they have my chair, but they had a rug that I had been looking for for a long time for my room. And they also had a new chair for me to have in my healing space, which I had been kind of wanting a new chair for that as well. And so the divine made sure that all of those things were there when we had the van, when we could load it up. And he had no doubt that it was going to be there. I had no doubt that it was going to be there. And because of that, all these other things that I'd been asking for were there too. And I had no doubt when I ran my credit card, right, to pay for all of it. And so uh, this morning I said, okay, guys, you know, it'd be really cool if you would fill my bank account pretty quickly because, um, you know, that was a substantial purchase, two, two large chairs and a rug. Um, and so this morning my client sent me a message that she was bringing somebody else with her and, um, and she knew that, you know, they were fitting, I was fitting them in and that she would pay extra and there was a bunch of oils and different things that she needed. Well, long story short, she wrote me the check for the exact, including tax, the exact amount um, for what I had gotten um, the night before. So when you don't have doubt, that's how things show up. That's how the universe works with you. But when you are questioning, well, I don't know, they haven't done it for me before, then that's what happens. Um, and I've had a number of clients lately who they've been doubting. They've been doubting the messages they've been getting. They've been doubting that um, the divine is really going to be there for them. They're doubting um, that they'll ever find love again, or they're doubting that they're ever going to find, you know, the perfect job. And all of that happens when we have that kind of doubt, we close down some of our energy systems. We've closed down some of our chakras. And one of the big ones we close is our crown chakra. And when we close our crown chakra, we don't leave space for the divine to come in and actually take care of that for us. Um, I've seen, hi Minnie, nice to see you. So I've had this interesting phenomena, you know, and I know some of you are healers, so I would love your, your viewpoint on this. I've seen a number of psychics lately, psychics and mediums, um, who get all their information from the, their team, but I don't know how to explain this. Um, so imagine that you have a bunch of people who are like your ancestors who are from the other side. And 
um, you're perceiving them with your intuition. And you're chatting with them through your third eye. Not through your crown, but through your perception. So you're sensing the angels around or you're sensing the people around and you're deducing things from that, but you're not actually receiving a divine download. And so there are people who have been doing this kind of psychic healing work who don't have their crown chakra open. And it's been mind boggling to me um, because I've experienced it with a couple different people recently where I've noticed that. So I don't know if you guys have any like thoughts or perceptions on that, but here you are someone who can read, you know, the angels and give readings and information to other people and you're doubting the divine yourself. And so when you're in that place of doubting for yourself, you may be clear as a button for somebody else, right? You know what you're getting is perfect and spot on for them. But for yourself, you're questioning, you know, that connection. So, um, all right, cool, Lindsay. I believe my crown chakra is open, but I feel like I connect a lot through my third eye. Yes, I think you do too. Um, I think you learned how to connect with your third eye first. Does that make sense? So before you had done as much clearing work and as much healing work as you've done, that was the way you did it when you were younger. Um, not young, young, but like teenager young. <laughs> You're not that old to begin with, you know, so we got to set things, things straight. Um, but, you know, a lot of people see with their third eye. And so it doesn't mean your crown is closed, but you're not getting the tingly on the top that you're getting your information up here. You know, you're getting a sensing or a pressure or a knowing here. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, except that you're only getting, when you're doing it from your third eye, you're, you're getting only what's in front of you and behind you because um, the crown encompasses your energy in 360 degrees, you know, or more if you're talking multiple dimensions. So it was just a really interesting thing. And that was what led me to this energy of doubt. So I was asking my spiritual team about where do we hold doubt? And really it depends on what the situation is. But first and foremost, if you doubt yourself, then you're disconnected from your higher self. So usually you have some kind of energy blockage in your heart, right? So in your heart, you're like, well, you know, and so then there's this sadness in your being that you don't trust your own intuition. You don't trust yourself. And, you know, and in that sense where our self in its highest form is connected directly to source, directly to creator, directly to the divine, however you see that. So if you don't have those upper channels wide open in belief, then maybe you're getting filtered information through. I don't know if that makes makes sense to you guys. Um, so, so first of all, you know, where is the doubt coming from? You know, we all have doubt. Um, and they're all sort of tests. They're all these little ways that we test our resilience. We test our faith. We test our trust. Um, and there are a lot of people who need to know before they take action. And when you have that need to know, you aren't trusting. You aren't trusting yourself and you aren't trusting the divine. Um, 
So Karen says, I have experienced that and take it with a grain of salt. I don't put any stock for myself as to what is being communicated. And that multiple dimension thing really brings it into clarity. Yikes. Yes, right? I mean, most of us are operating, you know, in a three-dimensional um, planet um, to some degree. But you know, the planet is growing and evolving and, and moving us toward the fifth dimension, the fourth and the fifth dimension. Um, and so we need all of our senses because they are our radar, right? They gave us a sense of what's going on. Um, and when we experience something that, you know, shouldn't be, um, then you're like, you second guess, right? We second guess that information that comes in. And when we second guess it, that's our ego. That's our survival body going, well, you know, maybe that's not really true. Um, you know, maybe you're, you're seeing things. Now, whose voice does that sound like to you? So for me, that doubting voice, that came in from me from my childhood. Because when we're kids, you know, we're wide open to the divine. We're wide open. We're full of wonder. We're full of joy. We see the spirit of everyone in every being, right? In the animals, in the trees, in the ground, in the people. We just see all of the magic of divine creation. And then we'll say when we were little to a grown-up, oh, my gosh, did you see that? And they will say, oh, you're just making that up. Or no, you didn't see that. Um, that wasn't what was there. And then, boom, that energy of doubt comes in. Huh. Maybe I didn't see that. And then the next time it happens, you say something again, and they say, no, you're making it up. Or no, you're crazy. Or that isn't true. And then little by little, you gather more and more doubt. And so when we turn into adults where we can make our own choices, we can make our own decisions, we're still carrying the doubt that our parents, our teachers, our friends gave to us when we were younger. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's where we're going. <laughs> We're going to clear this out of here. Um, and when you have all of those layers of doubt, it weighs you down energetically. And it depends on where you stored it. So yeah, there is a big, um, I need to write myself a message. I love how the messages come across your, your um, my spiritual team does this only when it's important. Um, They'll, they'll send it across the computer screen. So I'm writing myself a note because I, I, I want my team to know I saw it so they don't have to keep flashing. <laughs> um, yeah. So going back to our doubt, you're going to hold it in different parts of your body. Most of the time you're going to hold it in your belly. That's when you doubt your own intuition, when you doubt your own gut feelings, when you're the one saying, oh, no, it can't be that, or maybe it's not that, or yeah, it's when we impact our self-esteem and our self-worth. Yeah. Then we also um, will hold doubt in our heart because it hurts our feelings when other people doubt us, right? When you say something and somebody doubts you, it, it causes hurt feelings. It causes this little bit of sadness. And if you think back to when you were young, really young, and your feelings got hurt, it felt devastating, right? And so you hold that devastation in your heart. You hold that hurt from being doubted. Um, in there, you took it personally. And you didn't understand that the person saying that thing to you had lost connection with their magic. And that's why 
they doubted you because they couldn't see it. They couldn't feel it any longer. Yeah. And then they probably had the same thing happen to them when they were little. So this is not even remotely about blame. This is about understanding how doubt creeps in to begin with. And then we hold doubt in our third eye um, because it alters our perception. What are we willing to see? What are we willing to experience through our intuition or our psychic gifts or our spiritual gifts? Um, because only what comes through is what we allow to come through. Um, so there's a lot of control in there as well. And the control separates out into the top of the jaw, right in here, um, right above those ears. Um, when you are trying to control the messages that come through or trying to um, control your response to doubt, any of those things. So doubt can really put a number on us. And then if we doubt that God will help us or the divine, however you express that, if we doubt that the angels will be there, if we doubt that our spiritual team is there working for us in every single minute of every day, if we doubt that the grandmother earth loves us and um, wants to love and support us, then we will be disconnected also in our root chakra. Um, but when we are disconnected through doubt um, and we want proof, some proof can only be felt and sensed. And it, it attaches to how much faith do you have that it's going to be there? You know, I had a client um, recently who's been having a, a, a big struggle with their energy and their crown chakra was definitely not open all the way. And part of the homework was, could you just trust in the divine for one day? One day, can you believe that the divine is orchestrating everything perfectly for you. And that there is no doubt. Could you just do it for one day? And she was like, I mean, she had to think about it, right? She's like, all right, I'll try it for one day. And I'm like, okay. And at the end of the one day of releasing your need to know, and just knowing everything's happening how it's supposed to, no questioning, the end of one day, if you feel like you're breathing better or that you feel lighter or that you slept better, Could you possibly imagine doing it for a second day? But each day you just decide that, all right, for one day, I'm not going to doubt. And see what happens. See what happens to your energy. See how things shift for you if you do that for one day. Yeah. And then what if it becomes your spiritual practice? That you don't doubt at all. That one thing takes up so much energy in your energy field, holding on to the need to know, and, you know, it's got to be perfectly aligned or it's not right. Why? Right? The divine is creating and you're creating in every minute. You don't like your creation? Change it. You know? 
um, I had a certain amount that, you know, had been my comfort zone in my bank account. And I realized that comfort zone wasn't all that comfortable. I still was having anxiety about certain bills and certain things. So I shifted. All right, this is where I'd be much more comfortable. I know I can pay my bills, that nothing has to go. And if there's any surprises, I'm able to handle them without stressing. Yeah. And I shifted that within a couple weeks. Um, and it may have been sooner than that, but I came to an awareness a few weeks later. Yeah. And then when I sat with that energy, I'm like, how comfortable am I with this? I would be more comfortable here. So off we go, off we shift. And there have been other people who have tried to create doubt for me. Well, that can't happen. Well, it has. So your can't is not true for me. Um, or this this will never happen. Yeah. Hmm. But that's not true for me. If it's meant to be, it will be, right? So when we hold on to doubt, doubt really bogs us down. Um, my team shows it as if you're wearing like layers of armor for a battle you're not even fighting, right? So even warriors take off their armor, take off their protective shielding, when they're not fighting, right? And this isn't about fighting, this is just about being. So there's no need to carry this protective armor of doubt. It's not actually protecting you. It's not keeping you safe. And that's the thing that most of us, I think, um, don't understand. You know, well, I need this because it'll keep me safe. Well, according to who? And is it still true? We forget to ask ourselves, is it still true? Maybe it was true for you a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago, but is it still true for you right now? And when you're not sure, there's your doubt. And then doubt is usually a form of, no, it's not still true for you. Because when you have a yes in your energy body, it's like, yes. Yes. Uh, so Lindsay's saying, I find that I don't doubt myself as much as other people try to doubt my beliefs, but I feel bad for them because they don't get to experience the magic. I know. Um, but that's okay, right? Because they get to watch you having your magical experience. Like, okay, um, this is what I'm going to do, or this is what I'm going to create. And other people be like, okay, we'll see that, you know, when that happens. And then it does. And they're like, huh, how'd you do that? I just believed it would happen, and it did. Right? Now you're stirring their own inner doubt, which is a good thing because maybe they shouldn't be holding on to it either, right? So um, as we go into the healing meditation in a few minutes, you know, check out where you experience doubt. Now, some people will have some doubt, I suppose, in their throat chakra a little bit. Um, my team wanted me to point that out. Um, that's not where I carry my doubt. So I forget. <laughs> I forget other people might have it in there. But the throat chakra is um, when you are worried about saying something because other people won't understand you and they're going to doubt you. So then you don't speak your truth. And we've all had times when we do that. Yeah, I've been working really hard on that one. So it's not one that I carry as often. Um, I'm 
more and more comfortable saying what I do and who I am to whoever, you know, cause their, their opinion doesn't change who I am and it doesn't matter to me. Um, granted, I don't necessarily give them the full version of, <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain what I do sometimes. Um, you know, but I give them a ballpark idea and if they're comfortable having a conversation with me about it, then we will. And if they're not comfortable, then we won't. But I'm not doubting myself. I'm not doubting my abilities. I've, you know, helped too many people. Um, and I've helped myself. <laughs> you know, the amount that I've shifted myself is, Quite amazing if I look back even 10 years ago the amount of energy and trauma I was still carrying and all of the self-doubt um, well am I really able to do that am I really able to touch somebody and tell what's wrong with them you know isn't it weird that you're like a energetic MRI, <laughs> you know, but well, no, because where did an MRI come from? Because somebody could do it. And so not everybody can. So they needed to create a machine to do that. They needed to create a machine to take x-rays because somebody could actually do that as their gift. And there still are people who can do that as their gifts, by the way. But not all of us have that gift. So they created machines to mimic, you know, what people's spiritual gifts are, right? You know, and the, yeah. you know, ability to hear and speak to the trees and the stones and the, the elementals, um, a lot of people have lost that magic, but not, you know, not our beautiful mini for certain. Um, because we still need those people who help us connect to nature and remind us of the magic that's there. You know, and there are times when we get all bogged down in our own energy and we do miss the magic. We walk right by something beautiful, something magical. I was going to see a woman yesterday who's um, actually creating a healing painting for my sanctuary. And, you know, I was talking about the different animal totems and different things um, that were out there. So she could, you know, decide how to paint or what to paint and the colors and all that. And she said something to me about, you know, so all of your healing energy is peacock healing energy. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. I carry a lot of hawk medicine. And her eyes got really wide. And she was like, really? Because she had seen a hawk on her way into work and it was perched on a telephone wire that shouldn't have been able to hold its weight. And it stared right at her and she knew it was important. So she just held on to that. She believed that enough to be like, okay, that's an important message. I'll find out what it is later. And she was like, oh, so it was showing me you and your hawk medicine. And I'm like, could very well be, sounds like it. But it's for her to decide what the meaning is, not me. I know what it meant for me. It meant it was a sign that she's the perfect person to create my healing painting because she even experienced my healing medicine. Does that make sense? So my not holding doubt, her not holding doubt created a deeper, more full connection, which is going to allow her to do her healing work through her painting for me and for my students and clients. Um, so Lindsay is saying, yes, I always say that I'm my own proof. Yes, <laughs> we are our own proof. So yeah. 
this is a time for you to think about for a moment. I just want you to take a brief moment. Think about if there's any areas of your life that you kind of go, well, maybe not here, you know? Um, like, do you believe the divine, you know, has the ability to heal your your physical health or to release you from your trauma or that you actually have spiritual gifts or that you can have a um, spiritual practice and be fully supported by only your spiritual practice and not need another job. You know, do you have doubt in any of those areas? Do you have any doubt in whether your relationship is going to be fulfilling for you or long term or whatever you need to see? Do you have doubt about um, yeah. finances? I mean, we all have little areas. So just take a moment to like, Narrow in on what doubts you might have a little bit going on. I'm not saying this huge doubt, but just a little doubt. You know, there are people who um, have, you know, doubted what I do or doubt how I do it. Um, and if I held on to their doubt, then I, I wouldn't be able to do my work, right? But I can hear the doubt and actually know that it's their own doubt about themselves because it can make people uncomfortable when you're certain in who you are and certain in how you're meant to be, you know. I may have things that I would like to change, then it's just my job to change them, you know. But I focus on the big important things first, you know. The other things, eh, I'll worry about later. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, all right, I'm hoping you guys have a few areas in your body. I'm feeling some activation, so I'm going to take that as you have a few areas yeah. where you might have some doubt located. So let's do a clearing on that. And we're going to set the intention that... Um, you're just going to allow whatever you're willing to let go of to go. Um, because doubt can be well entrenched, you know. Um, but be gentle with yourself and allow the possibility for one day, the possibility that you could release your doubt to come in. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So we're going to start by, you know, making sure our arms and our legs are uncrossed. You can either lay down or put your feet flat on the ground or your tailbone on the ground. So you really want to be connected with Grandmother Earth. She really wants to hold you and support you while you are having this healing. Yeah. And we're going to call in the divine however you perceive the divine. Because we all have our own way of connecting. Maybe we sense and feel the divine in nature, in creation. Maybe we feel it in the oneness. Maybe we need to sense God or creator. Yeah. So just begin by Allowing yourself to call in the divine as you see it. And we're going to ask the divine to surround and protect us in a bubble of love and light. Infinite love and infinite light. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to call in our spiritual team, our angels, our guides, our ancestors, all divine beings of the highest 
fullest and brightest vibration available to us in this moment of now. Yeah. Each dimension that we are able to connect to and through. Yeah. We ask that this healing meditation be for the good of all and harm to none, including ourselves. Yeah. So we're going to begin by activating within us all the locations where doubt may be located. And just be aware, you may have a perception of pressure, tightness. You may just have a simple knowing. Yeah. And even if you have somewhere strange like the back of your heel, that's okay. Yeah. We don't need to know why it's stored there, just know that it is. So we're just going to imagine the divine energy coming down and slowly pulling out, sucking up like a giant vacuum cleaner is what I'm seeing today. All of the doubt that's ready to go. So some of it in the top of your head, near your third eye, behind your eyes so that you can see more clearly. Yeah. Moving down toward your ears and your jaw. Even releasing out of your right eye. And down your jaw and into the back of your neck and in your throat. Yeah. And gently removing all the words created in doubt. Yours or others. Yeah. And so doubt no longer has to be spoken. I got eight. And releasing the energy off your shoulders. In the way you've carried other people's doubt as your own. Yeah. Yeah. And moving down your spine and releasing all the ways that doubt has created anger for you, frustration. Yeah. Or anytime doubt has thrown you into a place of sadness of being misunderstood. God. Uh, uh. Ways that doubt has clouded your inner child's ability to experience magic and wonder all around. God. 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 Yeah. And releasing all the ways that you've held on to doubt when it's made you anxious or nervous or stressed. Yeah. The way doubt that has impacted your self esteem or your self worth or your self confidence. Just for one day, expand and open the possibility that releasing doubt could shift many, many things for you. Yikes. 
Ya. Ya. Hmm. Releasing any other anger, like righteous anger that you might be holding on to. You know, how dare they not believe me? God. God. Who do they think they are telling me what I saw, what I believe? God. 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 And then removing any doubt that you have in your relationships. Doubt about your feelings, doubt about another's feelings. Yeah. Even the doubt created around, is this person the one, as if they were only one person for you. Yeah. God. God. It's a lot of pressure on someone else. God. God. Creates doubt within them, doubt within you. God. 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 Doubt in their intentions. What do they want out of your relationship together? God. What can it just be? God. No pretense. <laughs> And any doubt that you're holding still around your safety, your security, not trusting yourself, not trusting your environment, not trusting the divine to provide for you. No. 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 There you go, guys. Beautiful. Now releasing any last energy down into the grandmother earth. So just feel it as it moves its way down your legs and your feet into the earth. And allowing it to go through multiple layers of the earth to get all the way to that juicy center core. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 Perfect. And now inviting the earth energy to come back up and fill in all the nooks of crannies. So just for this moment, just for this now, allowing the divine energy, the divine feminine to fill in all those places that used to hold doubt 
with love, compassion, support, giving room for all of that to flow in all areas of your life. Uh, all the way up your energy body, moving up through your spine and your belly. Uh, moving up through your ribs and your lungs. And really just allowing extra energy to heal your inner child with love and compassion unconditional love and empathy for other people who are in doubt and allowing that to flow down your arms and your hands and move up through your throat So that you're not creating doubt through your words. You're speaking truth and authenticity. Yeah. Uh, and up into your thoughts and your patterns and your beliefs and your spiritual gifts and all the way to the top of your crown and really allowing your crown a moment to expand to stretch and to grow, making room in your whole Hara line, that beautiful crystalline tube that runs from the heavens down through the earth. Uh, making more room for more energy to flow. Uh, uh, uh. And now just check in and see if there's any other places where doubt may be lingering in your ribs, in your back, in your neck. Just take a moment to invite it to leave your body just for this moment. If you need it, if it's helpful, you can have it back. Just imagine the possibility of your energy without doubt, just for a few minutes, for an entire day. What would that feel like? And does that create doubt? Nice. Now gently begin to bring yourself back into your body. Take a couple of nice deep breaths. Blow them out. Wiggle your fingers and your toes and stretch or yawn, whatever feels right for you and your body right now. Oh, welcome, Ingrid. I hope you got to enjoy that meditation with us. So, I encourage you just for today to release any doubt. And if doubt wants to creep in for you, have an awareness and a gratitude. I love to say, you know, oh, thank you for showing me that old doubt. And I'll check in to see if I need it. And if I don't, I said, I don't need you for today, thank you. I'm really sick. Yeah. Uh, hi, Laura, nice to see you as well. You are so welcome, Lindsay. Yes. You are very welcome, Laura, as well. Yes, like how can the quality of your life change by just releasing doubt? You know, 
we know it's in there. <laughs> we know we're going to have it from time to time. But do we really want to live our, our lives in that fear-based place? The, the way I see doubt is when people are fearful of change and fearful of moving into something unknown. But we're always stepping into something unknown. And when we hold on to that doubt and that fear, it's actually causing us pain and sometimes physical pain, um, but always emotional pain, but even sometimes physical pain because we've doubted ourselves for so long or we've doubted someone else for so long. Yeah. And maybe there's a reason that you've had to doubt somebody else. Maybe instinctively, intuitively, you know they haven't been speaking their truth. So that's okay. But that's your own, like, knowing of ding, ding, ding. The truth button isn't being, is, isn't being used, right? Oh, Mary Ellen, you are welcome, sweetheart. So that's a good, hmm. But that's not, you know, you know, you don't have to project that onto someone. You can say, huh, that doesn't totally resonate for me. Um, so I honor that that's your truth, but I'm not feeling that as true for me. But thank you. Yeah. And sometimes this is a difficult one. We have to face this one multiple times um, with the universe. Um, so just notice what ways your doubt gets tested today. Um, but how about making a conscious choice not to doubt yourself and not to doubt the possibilities that the divine can create for you, even if they seem out there. Like, I don't know how we're going to do that. You don't need to know, right? Just let it be okay that's a possibility that'd be cool right just let it be so yeah i'm gonna invite you guys um you know again if you enjoyed this you know chat about doubt or if you enjoyed the meditation piece you know please like and share this you know that's how we get out there in facebook land um and i know that there are a lot of people who are holding on to the tremendous weight that doubt creates in their their being, in their body, and in their life. And wouldn't it be cool for you and I to be a way to help them start to shift and change that? So that would be very nice. Um, and tomorrow night, um, you can watch my show, Soul Connections, um, at 8 o'clock. Um, oh, isn't that interesting? I just said 8 o'clock. <laughs> At 7 o'clock Eastern time. So who's in that time zone? I don't know. Um, so Soul Connection's on 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, we do a healing meditation that is completely for you in your healing journey, however you want to release, whatever you want to release energetically out of your life. And then I draw cards after for some divine messages. Um, and I pull the cards until everybody gets a card who wants one. That's just how I do it. Um, and Star Nations is such a beautiful place for me to do that because they allow me the space and the time to do that as needed so I can reach whoever needs help um, or guidance on any given day. Um, and then if you are in my neck of the woods, um, which is in Western Massachusetts, um, or if you're within like, a couple hours, you know, tonight we're having the full moon healing meditation and healer share. So we actually do hands on healing and some of my students and apprentices will be here to practice their healing work while I'm here guiding um, the energy. So it's a lovely exchange of healing and learning. Um, so if you're able to do that, that's from six to eight PM tonight, and I, I would love to have you here. Ah, nice, Lindsay's gonna be here. All right, yeah, won't it be fun? I love the full moon. Um, 
And for those of you who are in Star Nation's land, you know, check out Nashi's um, show this evening, Communications from Home. I did not see what the title is. I just know that she's always got this really cool, juicy information that she shares. Um, and that is on at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, enjoy that for those of you who are able to catch that show. And maybe I'll catch the tail end. Depends how fast we do the, the full moon tonight. And with that, you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Release that doubt and have a moment of peace and see how it feels to live without it. All right? Have a great one, guys. Bye.